Hey everyone, welcome to week eight of Advanced Econometrics. This week we're talking about GMM, or the Generalized Method of Moments, another estimation strategy that we can use to estimate structural econometric models. Uh, so just a quick recap of the last couple of weeks. Two weeks ago we talked about maximum likelihood, our first kind of estimation method, and then last week we applied that to the logit model, and we talked about how GMM was another way that we could estimate the logit model, and today we're going to uh, talk about how to do that. So first we're gonna start with just an overview of the method of moments, then talk about the method of moments estimator and give some examples. Then we'll jump to the more general form, the generalized method of moments and talk about that estimator and an example. Then talk, talk about some properties of that estimator, talk about the optimal GMM estimator, and then talk about some of the specification and hypothesis tests that you could do uh, once you've estimated a model using GMM. And then finally, we'll talk about how to actually estimate the logit model using GMM estimation. And then we'll have an example doing that in R that we'll talk about in class. The reading for this week is a set of supplemental notes that I posted on GMM. I think it's about 10 or 12 pages uh, that, that closely mirrors this, but goes into some more detail. So I would recommend taking a look at those notes first and then watching this, uh, watching these videos to get some, uh, uh, just kind of reinforce those ideas that are in those supplemental notes. So let's start with an overview. Uh, just first to kind of fix some terminology. There are two different estimators, the method of moments estimator and the generalized method of moments estimator. Method of moments is just a special case of the more general GMM. We'll start by talking about method of moments and then talk about the more general case GMM. But whichever one we're talking about, they are uh, common estimation methods used in modern empirical economics, uh, really most common in industrial organization, along with lots of applications in macroeconomics and finance as well. And one reason it's so common is that it's less parametric than maximum likelihood estimation. Method of moments or GMM only requires assumptions about moment conditions of our data and not assumptions about the full distribution of our data. And so we're actually going to call this a semi-parametric uh, estimator as opposed to kind of a fully parametric estimator, which is what the maximum likelihood estimator was. Turns out also that most of the estimators you've learned so far, either in this class or in previous classes, are, are special cases of GMM estimators. So OLS regression, two-stage least squares regression, generalized least squares, even maximum likelihood, all of those can be framed as special cases of GMM. So uh, GMM is just this really kind of broad general class of estimation that encompasses a lot of the things that you already know or, or use without even realizing that it's GMM. The basic idea behind method of moments or GMM is to use population moment conditions to estimate parameters. And so we're gonna get some moment conditions from statistical assumptions, economic models, something like that. And these are gonna be conditions that we, we expect to hold in the population. And then we're just gonna solve for the parameters that make those conditions hold in our data. I think that'll make a lot more sense as we look at some examples, some intuition, and then, and then get into uh, kind of the real formal definition over the next few slides and videos. But first, I've said the term moment conditions a few times. What are moment conditions? So moment conditions are functions of parameters and data that equal zero in expectation when evaluated at the true parameter values. So here are a few examples just from kind of statistical definitions. Just based on the definition, the mean mu of a statistical distribution is the expectation of any one draw from that distribution. So here we've got from the mean, mu sub y equals the expectation of y. Well, we can do a little math on that and actually reformulate it as the expectation of y minus mu equals zero. Now, what do we have here? We have a function of parameters, mu, and data y, and in expectation, this thing equals zero. That is a moment condition. We can similarly create moment conditions based on the definition of a variance. I won't talk through it here, but you can see the math. You can pause and look at it for a second if you want yourself. And also the covariance. We can use these statistical definitions to create moment conditions that are saying in expectation, 
how are the data and the parameters related to one another? So where do these moment conditions come from? Well, they can come from economic models. In a lot of economic models, we end up with first order conditions. First order conditions are just functions of parameters and data that equal zero. So that right there is our definition of a moment condition. A lot of times econ econometric or statistical models will also uh, give us some moment conditions. So for example, uh, instruments must be uncorrelated with errors. We can use that kind of assumption to formulate a moment condition. And we'll do that as we work through the videos this week. We also might have something like a model fit condition that we want to hold. We might want predicted market shares to equal realized market shares. And so some conditions like that we could reformulate as moment conditions as well. Um, we'll see specific examples of moment conditions as we keep working through these videos. But let's talk through the intuition real quick also. So let's suppose we have five random draws, five, 10, nine, 14, seven but we don't know the distribution. We have no idea what kind of distribution these data came from. We can't make a distributional assumption, can't use maximum likelihood. But the mean is given by mu, and that's gonna give us a population moment condition. Just by definition, mu is gonna be the expectation of a draw, uh, of a random variable drawn from the, this population. And once again, just like on the, the previous slide, we can just kind of simply reformulate that using a little bit of math as a population moment condition. We're saying here that a function of data and parameters, y minus mu, in expectation, that equals zero. This is something, just because of the definition of a mean, that's going to hold in our population, the population from which our sample was drawn. Well, the intuition here is that if we think that that's going to hold in expectation for the population, then it should also hold on average in our sample. So kind of the expectation for the population and the average for our sample, we can kind of think as analogs of one another. And so we would expect this analogous condition to hold for our sample, where we've just replaced the population expectation with the, the sample mean. So instead of saying that we think this equals zero in expectation, we're saying we can actually use our data, add it up, divide by the number of observations, and, 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 and that thing should equal zero. And then we're just going to estimate the parameter that solves this expression. Once we have our data, the only unknown in this expression is mu, and so we can just solve for mu and determine the parameter that makes this sample moment condition hold. That's the intuition here. Once again, I think this will make a little more sense as we keep working through some real examples. But before we work through an example, let's define formally what the method of moments estimator is, and we're gonna do that in the next video.